This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God, read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue unlearning the world with Book 2. In Chapter 3, this is Section 5, Part 1. Lesson 136 and the Purpose of the Body Part 1 David Are we on? (laughs) Right in the middle of a pretzel. Okay, we will start at the beginning of Lesson 136. Lesson 136 Sickness is a defense against the truth. No one can heal unless he understands what purpose sickness seems to serve. For then he understands, as well as its purpose, has no meaning. Being causeless and without a meaningful intent of any kind, it cannot be at all. When this is seen, healing is automatic. It dispels this meaningless illusion by the same approach that carries all of them to truth and merely leaves them there to disappear. Workbook Lesson 136, Para 1 By sickness here we mean bodily symptoms upset, and even the whole realm of psychological issues. You can also go to the flip side, to believing that someone is really healthy. The illusion of the health of the body can be carried to the truth as well and left there to disappear. We want to get to the point of understanding that there is no order of difficulties. Sickness is not an accident. Like all defences, it is an insane device for self-deception. And like all the rest, its purpose is to hide reality, attack it, change it, render it inept, distort it, twist it, or reduce it to a little pile of unassembled parts. Workbook Lesson 136 Para 2. That is what this whole world is. It is just a pile of unassembled parts. At every level. Whether you are talking about the cosmos, the personality, community, family, or even microscopic things. When you look around a room and see coats, ovens, rugs, chairs, clocks, microwaves and refrigerators, you are looking at unassembled parts. Each thing is seen as if it has existence in and of itself. The microwave is set off by space from the refrigerator, from the teapot, from the rug. This sickness runs very deep in mind. Things that are assumed to be everyday reality are just piles of unassembled parts. The aim of all defences is to keep the truth from being whole. The parts are seen as if each one were whole within itself. We are redefining what sickness is. It is not just symptoms in the body or dysfunctional communication in a family. Even just looking out on a winter scene and seeing separate snowflakes, animals and trees is part of sickness. As long as the mind is seeing separation everywhere and believing that each tree, snowflake, car, road and river has existence in and of itself, That is sick perception. The mind wants to hang on to its sick, twisted perception. 
sickness seems to be there to serve the purpose of seeing life as happening to you without having anything to do with your intention as if the mind then does not have a choice as if it does not play any part in the matter friend so using that example i only need to be aware of the purpose that i give everything if i am using the ego's perception then i see a bunch of unassembled parts if i am using the holy spirit's purpose then what is it david unified the entire scene the entire scenario becomes unified it becomes a backdrop that in and of itself is unimportant because the shining purpose is being held out in front form becomes peripheral unnoticed perception is selective and when you are zooming in and focusing on your intent on your purpose then specifics are unimportant they are irrelevant at that point friend so when i focus on the heat or on sickness or symptoms i am picking out one of the pieces and holding it up as separate trying to see how it fits into the whole which i cannot do if i am holding it out as separate david right and it takes two minds to agree that there is a sickness if one mind absolutely will not buy the bait of doing what you are describing that is what healing is healing is when i hold in mind how impossible that is as soon as there is talk about symptoms brothers seem to join in looking at the symptoms treatments and solutions that is just reinforcing and trying to share what cannot be shared it keeps the seeming reality of the illusion going instead of dispelling illusions it is like an invitation to hold on to them and make them seem real friend so when i'm coughing and someone asks me if i'm coming down with something then it is my job to get clear in my own mind about not joining with that david yes when i first started going to course groups i would be going along with my purpose in mind and someone would give me a compliment maybe about something i was wearing or my haircut it is important not to feel uncomfortable about not responding to comments like that just smile and go on in purpose without missing a beat instead of getting off track and directing attention to the story of where you bought it or who gave it to you for christmas that is just a way of directing the attention back down to the form whether it is it is a cute shirt or a nice haircut it is not to say that it is always has to be that way in form you may meet somebody and the exchange is just an opening to joining but often those responses are very unnecessary friend that is my chance to be aware and grateful to the person who brought that to me to look at and say i do not want to get hooked into that david it is a good opportunity and you would not necessarily do that with everyone in a course meeting that might be a very appropriate thing to bring up but if you are just chatting with your next door neighbor it might not make any sense at all to get into it 
It is about being attentive. You do not want to draw undue attention to symptoms, clothing, hair, or anything in the world of form. Friend, because all of that just breaks apart the whole? David, yes. Anything that is judged or valued as better or more attractive is getting into the ordering of thoughts. Judging is what makes the error real. As long as there are better haircuts and worse haircuts, good-looking clothing styles and poor clothing styles, that makes the error real. It is not nothing if it is valued positively or negatively. That is the metaphysical reason to not buy into those kinds of judgments. It just makes the error real. It makes the world real in the mind of the thinker. Defenses are not unintentional, nor are they made without awareness. They are secret magic wands you wave when truth appears to threaten what you would believe. They seem to be unconscious, but because of the rapidity with which you choose to use them, in that second, even less, in which the choice is made, you recognize exactly what you would attempt to do and then proceed to think that it is done. Workbook Lesson 136, Para 3 This gets back to all the mind tricks and how quickly they are done. It is all part of wanting to forget that I made this whole thing up and that I perceive exactly what I want to perceive in the situation. The mind waves its magic wand, forgets that it did so, and then sees itself on the screen as events that are happening to it, quite unasked for. He treated me unfairly. He should have paid more attention to me. She shouldn't have frowned. She shouldn't have yelled at me. Once the mind forgets, it is mind on the screen, and it believes it is a person. Then it thinks that my foot is swollen because a rock dropped on it. Or there is a feeling of being cold because the warm coat was forgotten at home. With something as simple as that, there is still the belief that there is something outside of me on the screen that is bringing my discomfort about. When we talk about these kinds of things, we are getting into more subtle realms. But the underlying thing is the belief that there is something external that is doing this to me apart from my own wish. Who but yourself evaluates a threat, decides escape is necessary, and sets up a series of defenses to reduce the threat that has been judged as real. All this cannot be done unconsciously. But afterwards, your plan requires that you must forget you made it. So it seems to be external to your own intent. A happening beyond your state of mind, an outcome with a real effect on you, instead of one effected by yourself. It is this quick forgetting of the part you play in making your reality that makes defenses seem to be beyond your own control. But what you have forgot can be remembered, given willingness to reconsider the decision 
which is doubly shielded by oblivion. Your not remembering is but the sign that this decision will remain in force, as far as your desires are concerned. Mistake not this for fact. Defences must make facts unrecognisable. They aim at doing this, and it is this they do. Workbook Lesson 136, Para 4 and 5 The next paragraph gets into the idea that the mind assembles the parts the way it wants to see them. In other words, the entire cosmos has been constructed by the deceived mind to be the way it perceives it. Even on the metaphorical level of fragments, no two fragments see the same cosmos because it is that fragmented and made up. In the ultimate sense, there are not even any two fragments. But using that metaphor, no two persons see the world alike because there is no objective world. The entire world is always completely subjective. It depends on the meaning that I give it or the way that I have constructed it, which can have enormous variation. I like this kind of temperature. I like these kind of foods. I like these kinds of climates, settings and preferences. The preferences all get laid on. Every defense take fra takes fragments of the whole, assembles them without regard to all their true relationships, and thus constructs illusions of a whole that is not there. But once the Holy Spirit's purpose is held in mind, there is divine order in everything that seems to exist. All realms of perception are seen to be the result of what the mind wants. The mind is causative and perception is always just an effect. That is what all true relationships are. Divine order. Which is quite profound if you think about it. Every single event that has ever seemed to occur in the perceptual world is all in perfect divine order. Except to the deceived mind that breaks it apart and sees some things as favourable and some things as unfavourable. A flood to one may be favourable, to another unfavourable. Financial conditions to one may be favourable, to another unfavourable. But really, it is all in divine order. There is nothing good or bad, but thinking that makes it so. To me that is quite a comforting thought. All things work together for good. And there has never been anything out of place. Everything is exactly as it is. It totally flies in the face of the thinking of the world. The thinking that you have to improve world conditions, crime or hunger. It has all played out. It is all in perfect order. Let's take another look at the statement that every defence takes fragments of the whole, assembles them without regard to their all true relationships and thus constructs illusions of a whole that is not there. It is this process that imposes threat and not whatever outcome may result. Workbook Lesson 136, Para 6 in other words, 
the outcome is the outcome. There can only be one outcome always. And that is whatever is on the screen. The script is written. Whatever is playing in the movie is what the outcome is. The threat comes from the perception and the interpretation of the outcome. The categories in the mind are what call forth witnesses. When parts are wrested from the whole and seen as separate and holds within themselves, they become symbols standing for attack upon the whole. Successful in effect and never to be seen as whole again. And yet, you have forgotten they stand but for your own decision of what should be real to take place of what is real. Workbook Lesson 136, Para 6 We will continue reading the last and final part of this section in tomorrow's episode.